Here we have a Nissan QR25 engine. These engines are common in Altimas as well as in other Nissan model cars like the Sentra. There's a common problem with this engine in that they blow head gaskets and quite frequently, especially after 100,000 miles. One of the reasons for this is because there's a difference in temperature between the cylinder head and the engine block of about 27 degrees that Nissan purposely engineered to help improve emissions. However, as a result, this causes a difference in expansion rates between the cylinder head and engine block, and consequently over time, the engine blows its head gasket. Unfortunately, it is what it is. There are a lot of videos already on YouTube that go over the process of replacing the head gasket on this engine. This isn't an easy job, though it's not what I would consider technically too difficult to do, but there are a few things I'd like to add to the process to help alleviate any of the problems that I've encountered. First of all, the cost in which to do this project will run you anywhere from about $100 to maybe a maximum of about $200, depending upon the quality of parts and also maybe the tools and machining required. However, if you do decide to do this yourself, you may also want to consider replacing the valve cover as well. The valve cover has sealed spark plug openings and tend to get brittle over time, leaking oil into the coil chamber, resulting in misfires. There are two price tiers for the valve cover, an aftermarket version and Nissan's OEM. The difference between the two is considerable. However, there have been problems in manufacturing defects in the aftermarket ones, which actually consumes oil, so consider that when making your choice. Now, during the removal process of the head bolts, once you're able to get to them after you remove the valve cover and camshafts, there are a 10 millimeter hex type head bolt, as you will see here. The problem with this design, as you'll notice, that there is some gunk and oil sludge that accumulates inside the bolt itself. And when you go about to insert the 10 millimeter hex socket, sometimes it won't allow it to completely seat the tool inside the bolt, and you may not even be aware of this. So it, even if it's up just a millimeter or two, and you start to try to unloosen the bolt, there's a strong possibility you're going to strip the inside of the bolt, and it's not a fun process to try to drill that thing out. You'll need about a 7 16 inch drill bit to do so, and then you'll have to contend with the metal shavings and taking a magnet while trying to get them out. Not fun. This may take hours just to complete if that's the case. So just a word of warning, if you're doing the disassembling of the cylinder head, make sure that you clean out the sludge inside the head bolt and firmly seat the hex socket in when you start to unloosen them. Secondly, these head bolts are actually made of a soft steel. They are designed this way in order to do the torque to yield specification during the installation process. The bolts will actually stretch, so once you've used a set of head bolts, they should not be used again and thrown away. If you are going to use Nissan OEM head bolts, expect to pay close to $8 to $10 per head bolt. This of course is pretty expensive. There are other aftermarket brands that include the same OEM design. However, after doing some research, I've discovered the Felpro brand of head bolts are actually a better design, and I'll show you why. The Felpro brand uses a different style head, and you'll notice it uses a torque type fitting, which requires getting a special E20 socket for, but it's not too expensive, which runs around $5. This new design will prevent you from stripping the head bolt. I recommend going this route. The Fell Pros are a little bit more expensive than the standard aftermarket bolts, which look similar to Nissan's, but Fell Pro makes a good product, and they're only about $5 a bolt, so you get a full set of 10 for about $50. I think the cost is worth it to do it this way, just because it will save you less problems in the long run, especially if you ever have to do this repair again. This head bolt set is by Fell Pro, retails for about $50 off Amazon. One other point I'd like to make about the cylinder head removal process, it's not necessary to remove any portion of the intake manifold while trying to remove the cylinder head or the, on the QR25. In fact, in some ways, I think it's easier just to leave it on. The only thing you have to consider is there's a bracket that bolts on the back of the engine that you'll have to get at from either the top or underneath that's a little bit tight, but use two 10 meter bolts that you have to undo. Then, of course, unplug everything else that is plugged into the engine components, and the cylinder head should come right off. 
At this point, it's much easier than to unbolt the entire intake manifold and take it off that way. Now you're ready to take your cylinder head to a machine shop for milling. Unfortunately, this may be a little bit more expensive to do it this way. However, this will guarantee that your mating surface is completely milled and flat while compensating for any warping that may have occurred. Machining milling is the only way to ensure that your surface is completely prepared and ready for the new head gasket. Anyway, I hope these few tips help for those who wish to embark and do this themselves. It's not too difficult to do for those with mechanical abilities. It just requires research and time to navigate some of the issues that I found will help the disassembly and assembly go much easier.